guys, welcome to another instalment in my Young Adult to Adult Book Recommendations series. I started this series a little while back actually and I've only done two videos in the past but I'm here for the third and essentially if you haven't seen one of these videos before it is me taking a selection of young adult books and for each of those young adult books recommending you a adult book that I think you will enjoy or vice versa. So this is a way for those of you that perhaps are looking to get into more adult literature, can discover books based on your interests, or if you just enjoy either of the books I've mentioned, you can find a new book to read because all of the books I mention in these videos are books that I enjoy regardless of whether they're young adult or adult. But without further ado, let's get into the books, shall we? The first young adult book I'm going to mention is Another Me by Catherine McPhail. Now Catherine McPhail is an author who wrote a lot of books aimed at teenagers and young adults that I read when I was a teenager, so a few years back now. And I've mentioned one of her books before which is Roxy's Baby which I adored. But I also really enjoyed Another Me when I read it and what Catherine McPhail's books all possess is quite a grittiness and a slight darkness and they were this amazing jump for me when I was a teenager from children's books to these quite dark novels I'd never experienced in children's literature and Another Me has this overtone of the almost paranormal or magical realism where you're never quite sure what's actually going on. It follows our protagonist Faye who leads a pretty ordinary Scottish teenager's life when she goes to school after taking a day off and all of her friends are talking about conversations that they had with her that she does not remember ever having. It seems as though Faye has been places that she doesn't remember ever being and having conversations that she doesn't remember ever having. And this quickly escalates beyond forgotten conversations or conversations she was never there for to hearing muffled footsteps echoing her own as she's walking that stop suddenly as soon as she stops. And not only does she seem to be with her friends when she's not, she seems to be with herself when there should only be one of her. But you're never quite sure what's going on so it's all about the suspense and the mystery and it was such an engaging read. And a book that I read quite recently that I think has similar overtones and a similar sense of unease when reading is White is for Witching by Helen Oyemi. This book predominantly follows our protagonist Miranda who is at the age where she is setting off to go to university in England. All her life she's suffered from a condition that both her mother and her grandmother and seemingly all of the women in her family have had where she wants to eat things that are not technically food like chalk. Her mother died a few years ago so her, her twin brother and her father are still coping with that and having to take care of one another missing one of their family members. But amidst all of what seems to be quite a realistic plotline there is a secondary narrator who is the house. So certain chapters in this book are told from the perspective of Miranda's family home. This house has been in her mother's side of the family for generations and feels very possessive towards the women in her family including Miranda and it certainly doesn't want Miranda to go anywhere. But anything that does happen which crosses that line into the magical realism world could be doubted and apart from this narration by the house we're never sure what's really going on and even the house's narration is a little bit unreliable and we're never sure how much control it really does have or if it just likes to take credit for the things that have happened in this family. It's incredibly unnerving and mysterious and is not to mention incredibly beautifully written. And the next young adult book I want to mention is Looking for Alaska by John Green. I've read two John Green books in the past, this and the ever popular Fault in Our Stars. This was my favourite and I think that's just because I personally could relate to the experiences the characters have in this book more than the Fault in Our Stars and I thought it was an incredible young adult book that dealt with grief and although I think everybody's experiences of grief are really different I think it gave a really important and in some ways accurate representation of the specific manifestation of grief when a young person person dies and the way their friends handle that. The book is told in two halves, one before and one after the major event of the plot. It follows our protagonist, a young boy who decides to attend a boarding school where he finally makes some friends, including the elusive and intriguing Alaska who he develops feelings for. Like I mentioned, this book is very much about grief as well as being a teenager 
and a young adult and I don't want to say too much more than that because I don't want to give too much of the plot away but I really enjoyed this book and a book I want to recommend as an adult alternative is simultaneously very different but also quite similar. <laughs> and that is Grief is the Thing with Feathers by Max Porter. This is another book that deals with grief. This book deals with the grief of two sons and their father after their mother passes away. And specifically the direct aftermath and how they cope with that grief and how they have to continue on with their lives um, with this person missing from it. And it's incredibly moving. Uh, it had me in tears by the end, but it is absolutely stunning. And I'm somebody who doesn't necessarily gravitate towards grief literature. So I think these are two of the most powerful pieces of grief literature I've ever read. In Grief is the Thing with the Feathers, the father is a Ted Hughes scholar, and one of the famous characters from Ted Hughes' poetry, Crow, becomes a part of the family's life. The way the book is written is as if Crow is physically there with them, but it's actually a metaphor for uh, their father's work and poetry and their grief, and it is obviously in part inspired by Ted Hughes' collection of poetry, Crow. You don't have to have read Crow to read Grief is a Thing with Feathers, but they do, they do go beautifully together, so if you want to read Grief is a Thing with Feathers and then read Crow afterwards, I would also highly recommend doing that. Next, I want to mention for my YA books, City of Beasts by Isabel Allende. This is actually the first in a series. I have only read the first, but thoroughly enjoyed it and hope to read the sequels one day. It follows our protagonist, a 15-year-old boy called Alexander, whose mother is suffering from cancer and his family is moving to Texas to get treatment for her, but he and his siblings are just too many, so he is sent to stay with his grandmother in New York. Now, his grandmother is an incredibly eccentric character who he has very strange memories of and is a little bit daunted to be living with. When he arrives, it turns out his grandmother is going off on a expedition to explore the Amazon rainforest and he is going with her. This book is full of a host of different characters and although the thought of a plot where characters go off into the rainforest could sound a little bit light-hearted, there's quite serious themes in it, but throughout it also possesses an air of magic and it's just an absolutely wonderful read. And the book I would like to recommend as an adult alternative to this is The Lost World by Sir Arthur Conan Doyle, the author of Sherlock Holmes. This is not a Sherlock Holmes story, however. This book was released in 1912 and follows a set of English expeditioners. So a famous explorer and scientist comes back from the Amazon where apparently he has discovered strange beasts that cannot be found anywhere else in their contemporary world. The scientific community however has laughed him off and doesn't think that his findings have any truth to them. Our protagonist, a young journalist however, decides to interview this scientist and this naturally leads to a group expedition to the Amazon. This novel has the same comforting element for me that Sir Arthur Conan Doyle's Sherlock Holmes novels do. It feels very quintessentially British, although set very far afield, and it's just absolutely great fun. But my camera is flashing at me right now, so I might wrap things up here. Do make sure to check out my previous two installments in the series if you're interested. I've also started doing a series where I recommend contemporary literature based on classics, so if you're interested in that, I will link it down below. Below. If you'd like to see more videos like this in the future, do let me know in the comments down below. And if you have any specifically young adult books you'd like to recommend to me that you think I would love, then do let me know in the comments down below. Because I don't always read as much young adult literature, but I know there are some amazing ones out there. But until next time guys, happy reading and I'll see you all again soon. Bye!